So I've decided to try to make videos instead of text posts because I feel like they might be a little bit easier to digest uh, these tips and tricks and mistakes and things if all you have to do is sit and, and watch somebody talk about it or listen to somebody talk about it um, than sitting down and reading line after line after line of, of what to do and what not to do and things like that. So today I'd like to focus on one big major thing when dealing with injury and that is ice. You'll hear it from doctors, your professors, your friends, your parents, uh, that just put ice on it and it'll be better. And while ice is a lifesaver and it does do a lot of good, they may not be telling you how to ice, when to ice, um, what to do with your ice. Uh, and, and that is, those are some pretty important things. Number one, is when to ice, which is at the end of the day. Don't do it when you have to play. Again, that's a really bad idea. If you absolutely have to, leave four to five hours between the end of your icing session and the beginning of you having to warm up. Here's the reason why. If we think about why we warm up, we, we're trying to get the blood flowing into our hands, into our fingers, um, into all of these smaller areas that of course blood is there, but we need more when we're trying to do really dexterous things with them. So we're trying to warm our muscles up into doing these things, but if we iced it, then now they're colder than they normally are. Like, we'll refer to ourselves as being cold, but we're nowhere near as cold as when you've just iced. So. Ice constricts the blood vessels and the muscles and stuff in, in whatever area it's on. And then you're going to have to allow your arm to warm up back to room temperature and then do your pre-playing warm-up routine, which can be a really long <laughs> amount of time. To be safe, like I said, four to five hours between the end of ice using use <laughs> um, and the beginning of your actual pre-playing warm-up. If you hear noise in the background, that is my chinchilla. She's finally awake. Um, so don't worry about it. She's fine. All right. So number two um, is how to ice. Um, and that would be not putting it directly on your skin. Uh, I use um, this is a Nexcare like gel ice pack. It's really squishy and malleable. Um, this one is completely thawed because I didn't feel like using a frozen one because I do have to play uh, in, in about an hour. Um, but these are really nice because even when they're frozen, they're still kind of bendy. Or what I like to do is I can I can actually make a crease in this so that I can have uh, I can have it fit really nicely around my wrist. Um, but, big thing is to not put it directly on your skin. Um, this goes into how to actually ice your injury, no matter where it is on your body, but especially if you're putting ice on bare skin, you need to have a barrier between the ice and your skin. So what I do is I use a dish towel and I will take my ice pack and set it here in the middle of my dish towel, like dead center, so that I can fold one side of it over and then fold the other side over. And notice that I'm doing it all on the same side of the ice pack. Both things are going this way and it's kind of in like a little, little pouch now. Um, now we've got these big old ends to deal with and I flip these over like this so that they're all on the same side of the ice pack and I'm left with just a single sheet barrier between the ice and my arm which is optimal. It's something but it's not so much that the actual cold of the ice like can't really penetrate um, down to your skin and your muscles anymore. So this is kind of a hassle having to sit around with this 
um, keep your arm completely still and straight and flat and all that. Can't really do anything with it. Um, and so I would normally take, uh, I used to take a knee sock and, and use a knee sock to tie it around. I do that especially, I still do that, um, if I'm just <laughs> icing, isolation, isolation icing, um, my wrist where I do the pack that is long ways and I'll pull it around. Um, you can actually kind of tie the, um, tie the ends of the dish rag together but it's not super effective. Um, so I kind of like to use a, uh, a sock or something to actually just make sure that it's, it's pretty tight, but this works. But I tend to ice my entire forearm like this. And when I do this, I use this. This is, uh, I got this as a gag gift for a friend of mine, it's a pair of leg warmers. Uh, the other one is in my room somewhere. Um, he didn't want them, sadly, so I've been stuck with them even though I hate the color pink. Um, I use them in pit gigs sometimes because pits are cold. And I, you know, sometimes, especially in operas or musicals, um, there could be a, an extensive period of time where your instrument is not playing. I'm a violinist by the way. Um, so there might be a lot of time where I'm sitting there and my muscles are getting cold from not playing anymore and they're actually getting cold because I'm getting cold. Um, so I will wear these with my concert black. I uh, haven't had any complaints from directors or, um, or conductors before but of course you know don't don't piss anybody off. Um, so um, if you can knit or something, I, I knit. I will show show you a piece of my handiwork in a later video. Um, you could just knit yourself one of these um, in black and then you'll be fine. So for this, when I ice with this, I will take the ice pack and I pull it into the arm warmer. So then I can slip my arm into it. Ironic that I'm using an arm warmer to ice it, isn't it? Um, I can use this and it stays, it jiggles a little bit, it sags a little bit, it'll like to flip over, but I actually like that because this comes to point number three is how long to ice. And you should never just sit it on there and leave it forever, like until the ice melts or whatever. You can do this um, with ice cubes in a bag. I would recommend putting a little bit of water uh, in the bag as well so that you have a little bit more uh, stuff to deal with the surface area and the strange uh, contour of your body because you know little little geometric cubes aren't going to completely cover <laughs> your skin very well. Um, I, a little bit of water in there can kind of help it out. Um, but with this, you leave it on for 10 or 15 minutes maximum. Um, and then you need to take it back off because at that point your skin, your muscles, your, your blood vessels are about as small as they can get. And then nothing is really being done after that. They're constricted as far as they can go and then they just sit there and get colder and colder and colder. And at a cer certain point they'll even stop getting colder. Um, so you need to take it off every once in a while let your arm, or your shoulder, your back uh, warm back up and then put the ice back on it. So what I do, this is where the fact that this isn't completely tight comes in really handy. Um, I'll leave it on and then when my, the top of my arm starts to feel tingly or, or super cold or something, then I'll flip it over so that I'm icing the bottom of my arm. Um, and then that, that's about it. Like I, I just flip this, uh, repeatedly flip it back over and over again. And I'll do that for about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, not much longer than an hour. Um, and then uh, I normally do it when I'm in bed and then I'm lazy and so I just sling it off onto the floor uh, and 
don't deal with it for a really long time. I have two of these jelly ice packs. Um, and so whenever I need to ice the next time, I'll go in and I'll get the frozen one and I'll pick the thawed one up off the floor and put it in the freezer and, and that's how that goes. Um, but th those are the big things, those are the big mistakes people make with ice is that they don't cover it before they put it on their skin. They'll do it in the middle of the day and they still need to play more and that's not good at all, at all, at all, at all. No, no. Um, and then they might, the third mistake is that they just leave it on for too long <laughs> uh, without moving it and, and letting it ice somewhere else. So um, that's all I really have on dealing with ice. Um, you might be thinking about heat. Uh, heat can be helpful. Don't use like a heating pad to try to force heat your arm after you've iced it, um, to like force it back up to room temperature and then try to warm up and play, that's a bad idea. That's too much quick temperature fluctuation for your body to handle. Just warm up naturally. As far as heating pads go, um, you can overheat and, and cause the irritation uh, because heating will help expand your blood vessels and that can help to get the blood flowing in and helping to get the inflammation out but that could also cause problems because you could just expand them too far um, I normally only use a heating pad on my back um, and I'll do that on my lower back at night uh, <laughs> while I'm icing my arm so yeah he heat isn't the greatest idea either. Just ice in short doses. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions and I hope this helps somebody. <laughs>